Here I'm going to introduce organic chemistry, talk about the basics and why I feel organic chemistry is so important. First of all, some people have this feeling that there's just a huge amount of learning off in organic chemistry. At the start there is a little bit of learning off, but that's literally there to give you the skills to be able to think about how to approach later topics on organic chemistry. In this video I'm going to focus on learning a skill to do with skeletal formula and understanding a little bit about organic molecules. So the images I've placed there are all organic molecules, they're the structures of organic molecules. But if I said organic chemistry was the chemistry of carbon, we can't really see any carbons within the structures. And the first thing I'm going to do is talk about skeletal formula. So skeletal formula is a way of representing molecules without showing the carbons because organic chemists essentially get lazy and there's too many carbons and also you'll notice that there's not many hydrogens drawn into the molecules. So organic chemists tend not to draw the carbons and not to draw the hydrogens when drawing out organic structures because there's just so many of them. So you'd be familiar with some of the names of these compounds. So if I told you this one is just paracetamol, okay we're familiar with paracetamol, helps us to relieve pain, right? Um, the next one there is Sudafed, okay? We take Sudafed when we've got a cold. The next one, a little bit more complicated looking, that's actually codeine. And the last one that we have there is caffeine. Okay, so, so we're really familiar with these compounds. When I teach organic chemistry, I want us to get the appreciation that these compounds do so much within our lives. They do it using the chemistry we're already familiar with. If you've looked up the site and you've seen more about intermolecular forces, and covalent structure, they do it by just interacting with receptor sites in our body. So paracetamol we know can relieve pain, Sudafed can help if you've got a cold, and codeine we know is a very, very strong pain reliever, very, very closely related to morphine and to heroin. So while these compounds are stuff we're really used to, we're not used to them on a atomic level. We're not used to looking at the atoms involved in the structure and how they interact with each other. So if you're interested in medicinal drugs or the chemistry of life, then we look at organic chemistry and we try to learn how these things get created. But to do that, we need some basic skills. The first one I'm going to show you is what skeletal formula is. The skeletal formula isn't technically on the leaving cert, okay, but some of my representations will be using skeletal formula and it's just an easier way to represent compounds. Once you get your head around it, it's quite a useful way of drawing molecules and compounds. So to start off with I'm just gonna I'm gonna draw a fairly straightforward compound like that. Now that doesn't look like much, just a few lines drawn together, but I can tell you that that compound itself is hexane. Granted you don't know too much about hexane at this stage, but hexane is a six membered compound from the family of compounds known as the alkanes. It's a fairly boring, fairly straightforward one. Quite often it's just mixed with other things and used in solvents. Now how do we get to that? So just pulled up a few rules that I've put on the website. When we're looking at skeletal formula, the first thing to think of is a carbon atom, because we know it's the chemistry of carbon. Well if I look at carbon, and I want to draw the simplest organic molecule, I'm going to draw this one, which is carbon surrounded by four hydrogens. It's called methane. Now I know carbon's in group 14, or four of the periodic table, it's got four electrons on the outer shell, so it always has four bonds. Written that there, each carbon must have four bonds. That's the crucial thing when we're looking at skeletal formula. So, if we don't want to draw in a carbon, we know that it has four bonds. What we do is, we just join up lines, and at the end of each line is an apex like this, where we usually change the direction of the line. And if the line changes direction like any of these points, then there is a carbon atom there. So, in this one I can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. I'll talk about the naming in another video. But if there's six carbons in a row, then I'll call it hexane. So now I need to see, well, what is bonded to each carbon? If I see carbon number one there that are labeled, carbon number one is just got a blue line directly bonded to another carbon, which is carbon number two. The blue line is a single covalent bond. That just means, if I see a line like that, that means that there's one carbon here and another carbon here. And if there's no other lines coming out of this carbon here, then there must be three hydrogens, because we don't draw in hydrogens attached to carbons, except for specific reasons, which is called stereochemistry, which we're not going to talk in this video. But if I just assume, if there's one line like that, then there's going to be two carbons at the end of the bond, three hydrogens attached to that, and that's called ethane. So all I have to do is count up the number of bonds I have, and at the end of each bond, if there's not a particular atom drawn in, then it must be a 
carbon atoms. So if I look at paracetamol, and now I've got an oxygen bonded there to what looks like nothing, but if there's nothing there, but there's bonds coming out of that like that, that must be a carbon atom here. And if there's a single bond there to another apex, that must be another carbon atom. And if there's, there's it looks like there's two bonds coming out of that, but it's going to another apex, so that's carbon, that's carbon, that's carbon, and that's carbon. There's six carbons in a ring there. Some have single bonds, some have double bonds. We have an aromatic system here called a benzene ring. Uh, for more on that, we can see a video later on. This carbon itself is just bonded to a nitrogen atom. That nitrogen is a hydrogen, because we draw in the hydrogens attached to atoms that aren't carbon. That must be a carbon atom. That's also a carbon atom there. Now let's have a look at this top carbon atom. If that top carbon atom there only has one bond coming out of it, there must be three other bonds to hydrogen atoms. Okay, So that is there like that. So skeletal formula basically just gives us a way of representing molecules. And if you see any structures of compounds online or anything like that, you're going to probably see the skeletal formula of them. As you can see, if we look at codeine, they get quite complicated quite quickly. All right, but the interesting thing about these molecules, if you look at codeine, codeine, and I've circled a group there with an oxygen bonded to another carbon atom there, it must be, with three hydrogens around it. If you change that group there, which is called a methoxy group, if you change that group and put in something slightly different, like, for example, you take away the CH3 at the very end there, okay, that gives you a compound known as morphine. Okay, we know morphine is a very, very strong painkiller used in hospitals, mostly. Um, if you change that CH3 group right at the very end, attached to the oxygen to an ester group, something you'll learn about later on, you actually get heroin. So a lot of our medicinal targets are very, very similar and can have really, really different effects on the body. Now, if we look at Sudafed, Sudafed is really, really closely related to methamphetamine, and I won't go into that in any more detail. Um, but the main thing is the building blocks of these molecules, carbons, hydrogens, nitrogen, oxygens, are all the same. The arrangements of them sli are slightly different, and so they have massively different effects on our body. But we know how they interact with our body. They interact using hydrogen bonds. They interact using Van der Waals forces and things like that. Okay, So they get into receptor sites in our body and cause changes within our body. Because they're all arranged slightly differently, they all have different effects, okay? But that's what chemistry, organic chemistry is about. Synthetic organic chemistry is about trying to take natural substances and recreate them, or try to take chemical reactions and make new substances in more efficient ways. So that's it for the introduction to organic chemistry. Next video, we'll look at things like nomenclature, a few of the rules for formula and things like that before we start and going into all of the different important groups. Because if I take a group of atoms like that and a group of atoms like that. Well, that particular group is no, what's known as a functional group. And it's a group that is responsible for many of the chemical properties of that substance. So we'll talk about that in a later video. So that's the summary. We've now learned a little bit about skeletal formula. Most important thing to do now is just to practice a bit. Don't get too stressed out about it. It's not on the leaving set course, but it may help you down the line to learn a bit more about chemical structures.